ಅತ್ರಸ್ವರೂಪಗ್ರಜಮರೂಪುರಿ ಮಾತಿ ಗೌಸ್ತಾವತಿ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂಡಂ ಗಿರಿಬರಂ ಮಹೋ ರಾಧಿಕ ಮಧಾವಶಂ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಯಶ ಪ್ರತೀತೃಪಾಯಶ್ರೀಗುರು ತಂ ನತಸ್ಮಿ ವಂಶಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತಾ ಪವಾನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನೀಚಿಲ್ಲಾಶ್ರುತಿ ಮೌಲ್ಯರತ್ನಮಾಲಿತಿ ನಿರಾಜಿತ ಪದ ಪಂಕಜಂತ ಅಜೀ ಮುಕ್ತಕುಲೈರುಪಶ್ಯಾಮ ನಂ ಪರಿತಷ್ಟ ಹರಿಂ ಸಂಶಯ ಅನಾರ್ಪಿತಚರಿ ಚಿರತ್ಕರುಣಯಾವತೀರ್ಣ ಕಲು ಕ್ಷಮಾರ್ಪಯಿತ ಮುನ್ನತಲರಾಸನ್ ಸ್ವಭಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರಿಯಂ ಹಾರೀಪುರತ ಸುಂದರ ದೀರ್ತಿ ಕಥಂ ವಸಂದೀಪಿ ಸದಾ ಹೃದ ಕಂದರೆ ಸ್ಫುರತೋ ವಾ ಸಚಿ ನಂದನ ಅಜಾನುಲಂಬಿತ ಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವದಾತ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಾಯಕ ಪಿತರೋ ಕಮಲಾಯ ತಕ್ಷು ವಿಶ್ವಾಂಬರೋ ತ್ರಿಜಾಬರೋ ಜುಗಧಾರ್ಮಪಾಲೋ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರೋ ಶಕ್ತಿಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಗೂಢಂಗಾ ಸುರಿದಾಯ ಭಕ್ತಶಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದನಾಯ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರಾಧಿ ಬೃಂದವನಾಧೀಶೆ ಕರುಣಾಮೃತವಾಹಿನಿ ಕೃಪಾಯ ನಿಜ ಪಾದಬ್ಜಾದರ್ಶನ್ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರದೀಯತ ಭಕ್ತ ಮಿಹಿನಾಪರಾಧಲಕ್ಷಾಯ ಚಿಪ್ತಾಕಮಾದಿತರಂಗಮಾಧ್ಯೆ ಕ್ರೀಪಮಯ ತ್ವಂ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪಾನ ವೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಶರಣಾರವಿಂದ ವೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಶರಣಾರವಿಂದ ಶಿಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಲರಾಮ್ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಗೋರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಗೋರ್ ಪ್ರಮಾನ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಗೋ ಸೊ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೂ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೀರಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮ ಸ್ತುತಿ or the <clears throat> or the prayers of sri brahma ji after the brahma mohan lila today we are in our meeting number 11 and we will be studying verse number 9 another very interesting prayer by sri brahma ji but before that as usual we will make some brief recap from yesterday's lecture verse number 8 very well known one ತೇನು ಕಂಪಾಂ ಶ್ರೀಮಂಶುಷ ಮೇಕ್ಷಮಾನ ಮುಂಜಾನ್ ಅವಾತ್ಮ ಕೃತಾಂ ಬಿಪಾಕ ಹೃದ್ಭಾತ್ಮಪೂರ್ಭಿರ್ಭಿದಾಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಜೀವೇತ ಜುಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪದೇ ಸದಾ ಭಾಗ ಸೊ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮ ಸೇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಅರ್ನೆಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅಂಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ಸ್ ಯೋರ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ವೈಲ್ ಪೇಶಂಟ್ಲಿ ಡರಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಪೆಸ್ಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಲಿವ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಬೌಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಯು ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇನ್ಹೆರಿಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ದಿ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ <clears throat> refuge of liberation so it's a very interesting verse in which sri brahma is mentioning how we can inherit krishna there you have inherent or inherited so so this verse starts a new section and somehow summarizes the previous ones and brahma starts to present his own case with full humility and with full uh, responsibility of what he did some minutes ago <laughs> offending krishna's form and offending krishna's friends forms by trying to kidnap them as well as the cops <clears throat> so here brahma is focusing on on, on bhakti and the effic- efficacy of bhakti how we just 
as a bhakta, we have to remain alive in order to inherit the ultimate treasure of divine love. No? I mean, it sounds little, but you have to do something as well. As he himself says here, if you earnestly are waiting for Bhagavan's mercy, Kripa, Anugraha, you have to <clears throat> deal with whatever comes on your path and embrace that, integrate that in your equation with full uh, responsibility, acknowledging this may come from my previous actions and it's coming in such a way that is nourishing my bhakti. Krishna is making the arrangement that my previous reactions are coming to me in a beautiful way. No? We, we forgot to mention that idea yesterday, but Janava remind me of that after the class, the idea of beautiful karma. No? Vishwanatha Kvartri Thakur uses that term, shovana karma, which means, I mean, generally you won't say, you, maximum you say good karma. No? Bad karma, good karma, but beautiful karma, that's like, Sounds almost like an oxymoron. <laughs> but Vishwanath Chakravartakur is bold enough as to present that idea. No? On top of that, he says, strictly speaking, the Bhutti do not have more, any more karma. Of course, the next question is, what does it, must it mean to be a devotee for Vishwanath Chakravartakur? <laughs> but technically speaking, he's saying they are sheltered in another department altogether. Daivim Prakritim Astritaha. They exist under the influence of the Swarup Shakti and therefore Krishna is taking directly personal uh, responsibility for his devotees. Yoga Kshimam Baham Yaham, he's saying in the Gita, I personally take care of them, personally deliver what they need and so on. So the devotee in such a situation basically has to trust deeply the intentions and of his master, if you will, and understand whatever is coming to me <clears throat> is having some purpose in my in my trajectory, devotional trajectory. So let's hear Maharaj will say, the environment is friendly. The environment is not unfriendly. It's friendly, always. Not just when things happen as we like, but always environment is friendly. But Krishna's friendliness may take different forms. That's the point. No? The environment is friendly, but friends sometimes will slap us also. And sometimes will embrace us. And they are still friends. Sometimes when they slap us, they are especially our friends, <laughs> when they correct us. So the charis have given the example, the father may give to the child you know, ice cream or neem juice, <laughs> depending the need of the situation. You know, if you need to get cured for whatever, you need maybe bitter neem juice, the bitterest of the bitterest. <laughs> and, and that's similar to father beating the son. Oh, giving something bitter. Maybe there is some root connection there. <laughs> so similarly, mm, Krishna's friendliness, Krishna's love mm, is coming. Krishna's mercy is coming to us in neem like way or in ice cream way. I mean, we, we shouldn't care. Huh? I, I know it's not easy if I tell you, what do you want, neem juice or ice cream? I, I mean, <laughs> difficult not to be biased, but we have to say whatever you consider best for me. My Prabhu. Okay, name just then. <laughs> Nim ice cream, maybe. We can get some version of us. <laughs> so this 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 verse interestingly is, is presenting this idea. No, the devotees <clears throat> having this degree of acceptance, and meanwhile the things are coming, whether name ice cream or whatever other ice cream. Tanumak manovir aham tabashmi with mind, body, words, the devotees. Engage in namaskar, in glorifying his deity, her deity, all the while accepting whatever is coming. It's not just I'm accepting whatever is coming. I mean, while I'm just doing nothing, just accepting. <laughs> but <laughs> but the devotee is glorifying Krishna. So the idea is, whatever they they are accepting, they are accepting with such gratefulness, realizing this is the mercy of my Prabhu. So I'm glorifying him by feeling grateful and feeling. I, mean, I should be receiving actually this particular sentence, but Krishna is so merciful that he's just delivering this unique ice cream to me. Mm -hmm. uh, whether neem or chocolate, <laughs> that's ice cream, no problem. It is as ice, ice, ice. <laughs> <clears throat> so a person who acts like that, that person becomes uh, <clears throat> the inheritor of Mukti Pade. Or he who is the shelter of Mukti. We explain how this line doesn't refer to Mukti 
as, as, as any form of mukti, because the Gaudias, the Vaishnavas are not, our line of Vaishnavism is not interested, not only in, not in Sayuja mukti, but in any other form of mukti even. Matsivaya prati tamte salukyadi chatustaya nechanti sivaya purnam kutunyat kalaviplutam. It is mentioned by Bhagavan himself. Matsivaya <clears> prati, <throat> my devotees are so full, sivaya purna, they're full in their seva, that salukyadi, the salokya and all these other types of muktis, samipya, sarsti, sayuja, and so on, they are not interested in that. Even if, the, if if coming again to this world facilitates their seva, they are totally ready for that. That's the prayer of Mahaprabhu when he says, Mamajan Manijan Manishware Pavatat Bhakti Rahai to Kitai. And he's saying, Throw me into samsara all the times you want, I don't care. But give me a high to ki bhakti. That, that's the only thing I, I, I may ask for. Hai to ki bhakti, whether here, there, narai, napara sarva, apitu arti darsinaha. What's the verse? Narayana Prasarva. Uh. <laughs> okay, Apituli Arti Darshan. Narak, Narak, Narak. Okay, no problem. The idea basically is for those who are surrendered to Narayan or Bhagavan, shell, uh, hell, heaven, earth is the same. They see the same because they are so full, satisfied in their service to, to Bhagavan. Hmm? So, Basically, <clears throat> in connection to this type of prayer that Brahma expressed yesterday, today we will continue. And he will continue praying very humbly, in this case, exhibiting more overtly uh, repentance or remorse, devotional remorse, by realizing I have committed rupa aparath, you know, offense to your form, Krishna, by, by considering your form as imposter-like form, if you will. I not only offended your form, but I offended the form of your friends, and your cops, because I tried to kidnap them. I thought I did. I didn't do. <clears throat> so that's heavy apparat. So Brahma is expressing his repentance while realizing the offense. And of course, with that, uh, inviting us to enter into that same spirit in case we enter the dark cave of apparat. Hopefully not. But if, if that happens, we have to know what to do, <laughs> how to proceed. <coughs> So before going to the verse, Baladev Vidyabhushan is mentioning, making some like transition between the last verse and this one. And he paraphrases Brahma, saying, the devotees die abak. No? He mentioned that in the previous verse. He's inheritor of your feet. He or she inherits you. But Brahma is saying here in this verse today, I'm not a devotee. I'm an offender. Here I am. No? So he will speak in that repentant spirit here. So let's go to verse number nine. I don't know if you were able to send yeah. it through the WhatsApp group. So whatever has WhatsApp, I don't, but I have my computer here. <laughs> you can see the verse number nine. It's an interesting combination regarding meter. It, do it doesn't follow one single meter, but every line has a different meter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so first line is Indra Bajra. It has 11 syllables. Second line is Bamsa Shabilam. It has 12 syllables. Third line is Indra Bamsa, which has also 12 syllables, but it's another meter. <laughs> And the last meter, it has again 11 syllables, but it's not Indra Bajra, but Upendra Bajra. So don't go crazy, no problem. You just follow, and I will repeat it very simply. So it says, Pachyesh me naryamananta adye paratmani tvai api mai mai ne mayam bita tyakshitum atma vai bhavam kiyaham kiyam mai cham ivarchi ratno. So Brahma is saying here, <clears throat> And remember, try to always bear in mind the context in which Brahma is speaking here. He's fully repentant, realizing the offense he committed and realizing how despite that offense, the object of his affection is standing in front of him, very mercifully giving him his darshan and the opportunity to have a glimpse about the desire that Brahma ultimately wants to attain, which is establishing a fraternal relationship with Krishna. So this is a mixture of of emotions, full repentance, but also feeling full grace is coming despite my mistake. So in that context, Brahma is praying. My Lord, just see my wickedness. To test your power, I try to extend my illusory potency to cover you, the unlimited and primeval super soul who will wilder even the master's evolution. What I am, am I compared to you? I am just like a small spark in the presence of a great fire. And these are not just words. 
Sanatana Goswami said the other day, <laughs> he really means that. Try to have that realization. I'm just one spark of a great fire. So let's go a little bit word by word and then try to share some, some thoughts about this verse. So Brahma starts with Pascha. No? So Pascha means <clears throat> like just see. No? Like he's speaking to Krishna, just see who I am. No? Who is the rascal who is in front of you? That's how Brahma is feeling. No? Just see. No? Isha refers to Krishna. Isha means like Lord. No? Some some amount of Aishwarya is still in these prayers. Now, Brahma, is, again, is realizing Krishna is to Bhagavan Soyam. He's not an imposter, but the original Godhead. No? It's considerable contrast. No? <laughs> From an imposter to the fountainhead of all forms of divinity. In five minutes, Brahma is going from one side to the other. So you can imagine how he's like processing the whole thing. So Isha, me anaryam, he didn't say. Me means my, and anaryam means non aryanness <laughs> so wickedness that's another way no, arya means someone who is aware of the higher values of life so an arya mm. means basically exactly the opposite mm. anante another name for hari which means unlimited brahma has just some minutes ago experience of that no? narayans coming from each one of the pores of that little child holding a morsel of food in his left hand no? one narayan other narayan mm. other narayan and Brahmas with more heads than the four-headed Brahma here, worshipping those Narayans. Such a display of majesty. And all of that dropping up. And Krishna is still like, where are my cops and friends? <laughs> and Brahma is like, <laughs> as we say, upgraded Bimohan, four-headed, spinning faster than ever. So Adi, there are many names that he will use here to refer to Krishna. Anante, who are you who are limited. Adi, you who are the Adi of everything. Primeval, the beginning of everything. Param Atmani, you are the super soul. None of these names, as we will see, had some purpose. It's not just random invoking of different words. <coughs> Twai, that's an interesting word, means you. I mean, it sounds simple, but we'll see there's some purpose <laughs> in the sequence of names. Now, as we will see, Krishna Brahma is invoking these names in a particular order. Api means even, and then comes Mai Maini which means he who basically puts in maya those who puts, put others in maya. You know, like bewilder of bewilderers or something. You, you know, we can speak of masters of illusion, but you make all the masters of illusion be like kindergarten boys or something in, in, in that. Hmm? Then he says mayam, means my maya, Brahm is saying, because he tried to spread some maya. He tried to hide the boys and the calves and whatever. Bitatya means spreading. Ikshitum means to see. Atma means your, one of the meanings, as we will see. Bhai Bhavam means power. You want to take seat? Ananda, you want to take seat? Oh, no. Okay. No? Thank you. Okay. If you need seat, we can. No. Huh? Just in case. No, no, just in case. Just in case. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he means only. Aham kiyam means to what I am to what extent, as we will see. Aicham means has to do with each desire. I desired. Eva, and then comes the example. In many of these verses, Brahma is always invoking some analogy to illustrate what the point he's want to make. We say arti, artihi, which means small spark, agno, in comparison to a big fire. So that's why I am in comparison to that. So as usual, for those who have not been here these days, I, I'm what I'm doing after the word by word, I'm reading Bhaktivedanta Bhavanubhat, which is a commentary on these verses written by my Guru Maharaj, who, which will appear in, in his forthcoming book, Shakya Mandal, and which he very graciously shared with me and with all of you. So I'll, I'll read that first, and then we will go <clears throat> through some of the elder ancient commentators of the Bhagavatam in connection to this verse. Mm -hmm. So it says like this. Having expounded both directly and indirectly upon the extraordinary efficacy of bhakti, Brahma next underscores the only formidable obstacle to the bhakti mark. <laughs> so in these first verses before this one, Brahma both ambaya vyatireka, which means directly and indirectly, he presented 
the importance of bhakti directly what bhakti gives or indirectly how other processes require bhakti for them to be successful so what to speak of bhakti and so on but now now brahm is presenting this idea of the greatest obstacle to the bhakti mark which is okay we follow Sumati's footsteps here. So Guru Maharaj say offense, aparat, either an offense to bhakti herself or to the object of bhakti, Bhagavan. Such offenses are sins of the soul rather than sins of the flesh. <clears throat> the latter arising out of material desire. Hmm? So papa or ordinary mundane sin is sin of the flesh, if we want. But aparat is something most delicate. No, because it's basically biting the hand that is feeding you. No? <clears throat> Bhakti. No. Some grace that is come without the serving, and you attack that. That's the most um, stupid thing you can do <laughs> to be direct. But sometimes we do it. No? So, anyhow. So, that's very delicate. That's the only thing that will create some. Uh, delay in our process and, and, and maybe more than that. Krishna the Gita is saying Neha Bikram Anasasti Pratyabhayana Vidyate Salpa Mapyasya Dharma Syatrayate Mahato Bayat. In this process there is no loss, no diminution. Ambishwanat Chakravarta could quickly commence except for Aparat. <laughs> no, because you can quickly no okay, no loss, no diminution. I can do whatever I like and I will always be retain what I if you engage in Aparat. That's an exception to the rule. Because again, you are going against the very, again, hand that is feeding you. Aparad means basically that. Aparad. Radha means Radha. <laughs> the form of bhakti, the ultimate form of bhakti. And apa means to go against. To go against love. How can you proceed, pro progress in the path of love if you attack love? That's not like the logic, the math, to make devotional advancement. Of course, that say we it's important to understand that okay, you say okay, aparad makes bhakti disappear. Doesn't mean aparad is more powerful than bhakti, because there's nothing more powerful than bhakti. It only means bhakti devi herself is not pleased when aparad is there and she retires out of her own accord. It's not that aparad is forcing bhakti to leave or something, but bhakti is not pleased whenever there is aparad whenever there is offense to bhakti, to bhaktas, and so on. Hmm? Anyhow, some thoughts. Let's continue with my Guru Maharaj's Bhavanubhad. <clears throat> In explaining bhakti's efficacy, Brahma spoke of those who reject bhakti in previous verses and how such rejection renders their efforts to attain transcendence ineffective. Hmm? Brahma spoke before how jnanis or yogis who embrace their respective paths, if they want to attain success, they have to mix their path with bhakti. But if they offend bhakti, jnera vindaksha vimokta maninas to yasta bhava to be shuddha. So the Bhagavatam is saying, even if you attain jivan mukti, you are in the preliminary stage to attain brahma Yuja. If you offend bhakti, you fall. Mm. You don't fall from brahma Yuja, you, you fall from jivan mukti by offending bhakti. Mm. Such outright rejection of bhakti can constitute an offensive disposition toward her. However, Brahma, and Brahma is not a jnani or a jogi, a bhakta, proceeds in his next verse by holding himself up as a glaring example of one who has offended the perfect object of love, bhakti, Swayam Bhagavan himself, Sri Gopal Krishna. So Brahma is realizing. <clears throat> his mess. He's asking Krishna, please, as they say in the US, bless this mess. <laughs> <laughs> How did Brahma offend Krishna? He wanted to test the power of Krishna by exercising his own magical powers. And in doing this, he sought to interfere with Krishna's picnic lunch. You cannot do that. No? No. <laughs> Krishna's first picnic lunch in the Lila. That's even worse. No? I mean, everything is planned for our first picnic life and in this lifetime in earthly Lila. And you dare to interrupt that. I mean, that's delicate. Stop. <laughs> so the idea is Brahma did not only, if you want to make it worse, and Brahma is making as worse as he can in his own mind, in his spirit of repentance. I did not only offend the form of Krishna by thinking he was an imposter, 
I did not only offended his friends trying to kidnap them. I did not only offended his cops by trying to kidnap them, and I'm failing all that. But I make not only Rupa Aparat offend to their form, but Lila Aparat, because I interrupted the Lila. I interrupted the picnic. I mean, I tried to interrupt the picnic. No, he, Brown did not have agency in that, but he tried. So he's realizing all the things. Oh my God, I not only offended this by this and this and this and the very first picnic, I tried to ruin the whole thing. What a mess I am. <laughs> and I want to be a friend. I want to enter that picnic. I mean, the implications of his request at the beginning of creation, give me Sakya, Brahma say that to Krishna, implies, okay, Krishna gave a, a glimpse, a trailer. This, this is what you want. There is a place for you. We are waiting for you here. There is a place for you in the picnic. But I'm trying to interrupt the whole thing. So <laughs> basically, Brahma is realizing, I mean, I'm a nonsense. I mean, I'm going against my best interest. I mean, I, I requested something. Krishna made the whole arrangement to facilitate that. And I'm trying to attack and interrupt that same thing that I ask. I mean, what's going on with me? So Brahma is in this particular spirit. <clears throat> then, witnessing Krishna's subsequent display of majesty, he realized how insignificant he was in comparison to Krishna, the Paramatma, whose magic bewilders magicians. He realized in some measure, not fully yet, the difference between power derived from Krishna's Maya Shakti as opposed to that of his Sarup Shakti. That's another category of magic, if you want. Thus, Brahma compared himself to a mere flame of the fire of Krishna. So again, this is the background of his saying, I'm just a mere flame of your fire. No, no, he, he really means that. He really, I mean... He, he thought I'm Brahma some minutes ago. A Brahma Bhubana Loka. Krishna said, yeah, but <laughs> from your position to the lowest, that's nothing in comparison to this. So Brahma is entering into deep repentance. So that's an important, let's stop there for a minute. Repentance, that's an important word. No, in, in a healthy way, no, we are not promoting neurosis in the name of repentance. It can happen. <laughs> that's not the idea. <laughs> So no, nor one extreme, nor the other, as we say the other day, nor complacency, not neurosis, no, middle point, humility, repentance in a healthy way. No. Not all those things in an ending being complacent or neurotic. No. <clears throat> so I'm thinking about Shikshastakam, second verse of Shikshastakam in this connection, Mahaprabhu is showing this very nice example of repentance. No. He's mentioning, I have no attraction for your name, Durdaiva Midrishami Hajanina Anurag. But the first three lines of the verse, what he's saying. He's showing appreciation and gratefulness from all the positive stuff that is in the name, if you will. No? And ending names, all Shaktis are there, no strict rules and no hard and fast rule to follow. Such is your mercy. So three lines of appreciation and gratefulness. And one line of, but I am such a fallen personality, I have no attraction for this. No, like showing like before you, you are about to lament and enter into that negative, quote unquote, spirit. There has to be something very positive that you have to be appreciating that is coming to your life. And, and, the, and because you feel I'm not fully taking advantage of that, on that basis comes lamentation. Because if not in the name of lamentation, again, neurosis, dysfunctionality, depression, discouragement, and your ego remains in the center in those cases. <laughs> no, I, because I am this and I am, oh, and, and, but there's not the previous backdrop of proper humility and appreciation. No? Like when this devotee told Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm the most falling of your disciple. Well, you know what Prabhupada said. You aren't know the most anything. <laughs> so if I cannot be the, the highest, let me be the lowest. The est, something est. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Middle point. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu is showing this verse, hmm? proper lamentation with humility. Hmm? We always hear the third verse of Shikshastagam like an example of humility, but if you want to reach to that humility, first you have to approve the test of humility in the second verse to exhibit proper mm -hmm. repentance and proper gratitude and appreciation of the, the breadth and depth of the gift that is coming, basically. I mean, 
real lamentation has very deep realization as in the background. Like I'm realizing how deep this is, this gift is, how the thing that is coming from Sri Guru is really uncomfortable. And on the basis on that, I compare myself and my degree of how much I'm taking that, and then I lament. <laughs> but if you lament without understanding how big that is, it's, again, it's, it's a mind trick to remain in the center. To think you are in the center, you are not in the center. You know, that, that's the point. No? <laughs> so Mahaprabhu is this verse is showing the type of attitude to attract Krishna's attention to our life. No proper. No, Sri so Maharaj will say, try to increase your negative side. And again, you have to understand his words no? because if not, you just like take the whip and starts like okay, you know. Uh, but it all begins with I am, I am, I am, I am, I am a medium. That's all. So increase your neck. He will use to speak in terms of how this in English polarities. No, so the negative polarity attracts the positive. No, so you want to attract Krishna. He's the supreme positive one. So you cannot go to him. He's the supreme positive. If you go positive, that won't attract him. You have to go in a negative way. So negative means this idea, no proper lamentation, not trying to assert yourself in front of the positive, no? which Brahma tried. And we know which is the result of that. We have to learn from all these sections. We are not Brahma, but we, we would like to be. We would like to be Krishna unconsciously in many ways. <laughs> so what is big Brahma? No? So we need to, 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 to learn from these things. Actually, interestingly, this second verse of Shikshastaka Mahaprabhu presents it, a level of lamentation. And when Krishna Das Kavirash Goswami presents this verse at the end of Chaitanya Charitamrita, he says, by hearing the meaning of this verse, all lamentation will disappear. And you go to the verse and there's lamentation. <laughs> so he's saying, if you learn how to lament properly, you will stop lamenting. At least you will stop lamenting from those things which are not worthy of lamenting. It doesn't mean that you have to stop lamenting altogether. So this lamentation that Mahaprabhu is showing here puts an end to all lamentation. In other words, Srila Prabhupada used this word. No? You are lamenting for those things which are not worthy of lamentation. That's, those are Krishna's words to Arjuna in the very beginning of the Gita. That's how the Gita begins. That's how our, our, our journey somehow begins and sometimes continues for some time. <laughs> but this is a very important point. Do not lament for those things which are not worthy of lamentation basically means learn what to lament for. <laughs> He's not saying do not lament in any way. He said, do not lament unnecessarily. Mm. That's the first chapter of the Gita, Vishada Yoga. Mm. Vishada Yoga means basically the yoga of lamentation, the yoga of despair, the yoga. And in that first chapter, it's just Krishna, uh, Arjuna, schooling Krishna or trying to. Huh? Why he's not fighting or why he feels what he feels and representing basically victim consciousness in one way. No? <laughs> so Krishna is like, okay. Are you over? Not yet? Okay, continue. <laughs> what times? Oh, are you have to? Okay. So Arjuna is like, oh, because... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's not Arjuna again. We know who he is for. No, it's like when Mahaprabhu is telling Raghunath Das Goswami, do not wear, do not follow fashion and do not wear, eat fancy uh, food. I mean, do you think he's really actually speaking to Raghunath Das Goswami? He was wearing, luckily, one coping. <laughs> And eating whatever the cows in Puri were not even taken. So he was not telling that to Raghunath Das Goswami. It was for us. So similarly here, Arjuna is a Nitya Siddha. No? So it's for us. So first chapter of the Gita is us giving discourse. No? Telling Krishna what things should, how things should happen. And Krishna mm -hmm. says like, okay, there's not too much place for me here yet. So let's hear, let's wait. Till he get, realizes he's in an labyrinth you say mm -hmm. that he can without an exit he's like yeah. where i am where i am mm -hmm. <laughs> and then eventually hmm, arjuna will realize he says oh my god okay. he says in the second chapter i'm your disciple i surrender to you uh i'm crying and crying so then krishna will as we will see will first thing he will see will just die arjuna and you said the same word that Brahma is using here, Anarya. Mm -hmm. Anarya. You speak very nicely, but you're a fool, basically. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, let's continue. <laughs> 
Sridhar Swami, let's begin with Sridhar Swami's commentary, Bhavartha Deepika, ancient commentator of the Bhagavatam, very much revered by Sriman Mahaprabhu. So Sridhar Swami is mentioning here, having praised in this manner in the previous verse, remember, <laughs> Brahma confesses his offense to make the Lord forgive him, saying, although you are Yogeshwareshwar, Krishna is known as Yogeshwar, but also he's known as Yogeshwareshwar, no? Like he's the master of master of all masters of mysticism. So if, just in case Brahma thought I am Yogeshwar, Krishna said I am Yogeshwar. <laughs> <laughs> so although you are Yogeshwar, Brahma is realizing that I try to exhibit my own so-called power and affect you. How ridiculous! <laughs> Who I am to do this to you? I am nothing, like a flame ar arising. From a fire, it's nothing compared to the fire. So again, Brahma is realizing all the things. I was trying to cheat you, and you're your guest, but it's for I mean, I'm not supposed to be Brahma. I'm not supposed to be a smart guy who knows some stuff, but I'm, I'm really doing ridiculous. Sanatan Goswami continues in the same line. Now, the first, first words of the verse includes all these things, like Pashya. Pashya means just see. No. So this just seems all the things like, oh, I'm such a fool. How ridiculous what I've tried. The whole rest of the verse is like an explanation of just see. No, just see. <laughs> so Sanatan Goswami said, just see. <clears throat> and the implication is, now the revelation of my unsaintliness will be perceived. And he translates anaryam as unsaintliness. No, not proper arya, arya twa, proper behavior. And then Brahma reveals his offensive actions through the different names that he will call Krishna in this verse. So Sanatana Goswami presents them in sequence and, 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 come, and going from in, in increasing significance. So I'll mention them to you to, to see why, again, he's using these particular names. <clears throat> First, he's calling Krishna Isha. So he says, oh, Isha, you are my master. So again, you are my master, but I didn't treat you as such. Sorry for that. Offense number one. <laughs> Furthermore, Sanatana Goswami says, O oh, Ananta. Ananta means you have unlimited glories. You are an unlimited, but the implication is, as we spoke the other day, Gunatmana. You have unlimited glories. Furthermore, Adhye. Adhye is, you are my father. You are my beginning. Hmm? And I didn't treat you as my father with proper respect. Hmm? Furthermore, Paramatmani. Sanatana Goswami translates, you are my supreme guru. You have revealed different types of knowledge to me from the very beginning of creation. I didn't treat you as my guru. So again, Brahma is putting all these things one on top of the other. <clears throat> Remember, the Bhagavatam begins seeing what? Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaya. In the beginning of creation, Brahma was enlightened by Krishna. And above all this, not only you are God, unlimited, my father, the beginning of all, my guru, but Twayi means you are you. <laughs> Twayi means you. So you are you means you are not only God or Paramatmani or Guru, but you are Krishna's too, Bhagavan Sayam. Brahma is realizing this on the spot here. So I did not only offend some Anga of Bhagavan, some expansion, but I offended you, Krishna's too, Bhagavan Sayam. When God wants to be himself, God as he is. No, <laughs> in the intimacy of his love. <clears throat> and the point with Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam is also this one. Ram is saying, I'm realizing you as Krishna in Vrindavan. And part of that realization is, as we said the other day, that Krishna is never alone. So I'm realizing that you have Shaktis and those Shaktis are personified in your associates. And I have offended those Shaktis as well. Twice, uh, Krishna, Brahma saw Krishna in the beginning of creation, but in the beginning of creation, Brahma, uh, Krishna was not appearing with you know, cows and gopas and gopis. was himself, alone. So it was a more reduced version of what he's seeing now here. Now he's seeing Swayam Bhagavan Krishna you know, with all full splendor, you know, full realm of, of, of companies, people, devotees. Mm -hmm. Because the point is, as Guru Mahesh made the point before, at this point, at this stage of Brahma's sadhana, he has blossomed, his sadhana has blossomed to a point that he, his realization corresponds with Krishna 
in that particular form. In the beginning of creation, Brahma was just in a budding stage of realization. So Krishna appeared in a form corresponding to that budding stage. But through some time, beginning of creation till Dwapara Yuga, and a few ages in between, <laughs> Brahma's realization grew, and Krishna's appearing now in a more, if you will, comprehensive way than that that he appeared in the beginning of creation. So Brahma, again, is realizing all this at this moment. Hmm? And even about this, about Tuayi, you are you, Mai Maini. Mai Maini means, remember? Maya. <laughs> something <laughs> has to do with Maya. You are the bewilderer of the bewilderers or something like this. You are the master of Maya. Or Jogeshwar is another way of saying that. But in this case, this idea is on, in, on top of Tuayi, you are you, because Maya Maini refers not to Maha Maya, but to Yoga Maya. So Brahma is realizing now the principle of Lila Shakti, Yoga Maya. He, he, he had no idea what was the meaning of this. Now he's realizing your Sharup Shakti is present, and again, in the form of your associates. So Sanatana Goswami is saying the, the order of these names is increases in order of significance and goes from also Aishwarya to Madhurya. No, from majesty, no, Isha, O oh Lord, Anante, O oh Unlimited, Adie, O oh Beginning of Everything, to you are my father, more closer, that's closer. You are my guru, that's even closer. You are you, that's even closer. <laughs> and you are you in connection with your yoga maya, sort of shakti, that's even closer. So we are pretty much, <laughs> the other day, <laughs> When the Buddha posted, Jagannanda posted, <laughs> the Vaishnavas are the big Maya bodies, no? he said. We are the biggest Maya bodies. Do you agree? <laughs> well, Maya bodies. He said, because we believe in two Mayas and we are always under one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way of saying, of course. Maya body means those who follow Maya, basically. No? So Maya body means. So we are always speaking about Maya. You have Yoga Maya or Maha Maya. You know, free will means you choose which Maya you want. No? There's no third option. Of course, he was making a play of words. No, he was not pr proposing we follow Shankaracharya or anything. But in one sense, we are the biggest Maya body. So that's in case there's a place for Maya body. <laughs> Another interpretation here is. Uh, that Brahma is telling to Krishna, instead of I try to, by showing my maja, my maya, I try to show my greatness, because that's the general idea we mentioned till now. Maya, Brahma told that to Krishna. By showing my trying to show my quote unquote magic, I try to show my greatness. The word atma here can mean my or can mean your. So also can mean by spreading my maya, I try to see your greatness. By Bhavan, your your opponent. But the point is that Brahma didn't want to see Krishna's greatness like I want to see Krishna's mm -hmm. great, but I, he in the spirit of taste testing him. Mm -hmm. like, let's see your greatness, or something <laughs> like this. <no? laughs> so Shall without knowing yet yeah, who Krishna was, again, he was again Ananta Adi Paramatmani, all these names, no? but in the challenging spirit. So that's a possibility. No? How why Brahma said like this. Also, the word he, Sanatan Goswami, here we are with Sanatan Goswami's Brihad Vaishnav Toshani. The word he, he says, may indicate certainty or despair. So, in this case, it's the, it's the two of them. Um, certainty in the sense of Brahma saying, I'm certainly a fool. No. <laughs> I'm certainly an offender, and so on. And despair, of course, remorse, repentance by realizing that. Hmm? And then the word kian. Sanatana Goswami says, Kian means to what extent? Hmm? Hmm? Implies, Sanatana Goswami says, Brahma is saying to Krishna, even if you mercifully consider that what I did is not really an offense, because Krishna is very merciful, he may say, nah, it's okay, no, no, it's not that, that big problem. Even if you think that, nevertheless, to do this to you in that way, I must be vile. Am I not? <laughs> so that's the spirit of of someone who is really repenting. No, it's not if you feel I've made an offense and you go to the person you offended, and that person, due to his her mercy, will say, 
It's okay, it's okay if you're shunted. Oh. <laughs> but it's not, the, oh, okay, it's okay. Then I didn't make any offense. You'll say, okay, thank you so much. We continue like, no, no, it's not like that. You will try to, no, 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 I really made an offense. No, no, you didn't make an offense. Yeah. So that comes this, again, in a, in a proper spirit, no neurosis, no not trying to defeat the other one. I made an offense. You are wrong. No. <laughs> we want to be forgiven. But that's what Brahma is thinking here. Even if Krishna said, it's okay, Brahma, no problem. Let's continue. Brahma said, no, 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 no. I, I did it really wrong, basically. Let's see what Srila Jiva Goswami has to say hmm? in his Lagu Vaishnav Toshani commentary. <clears throat> in this verse, Brahma asks forgiveness for his offense making himself an example of the futility of trying to know the Lord. So he makes this point here. No? Ram is saying, basically, my offense was I tried to yeah, to capture you, with calculate. Know you means also trying to trap you, to control you. Because if I want to know something, means whatever I get to know, it's under my control. If I know how this works, I can manipulate that. It's mine. So Brahma is a pretty well, again, four heads, thinks a lot. He has this some scar of knowing stuff. <laughs> but with Krishna, he found, okay, something different is going on here. So this whole Lila is showing Gyan is not a means to understand Krishna over and over again. Bhakti is the way. Gyan Brahma already said that in third verse. Gyan Sunya Bhakti. Brain dead Bhakti in the words of Srila Siddha Maharaj. <laughs> The way to understand you is not with my head, but with my head on the ground. With my head, yeah, in the ground. <laughs> no, offering pronoun. Doing, how do you say, Sir Sasana, when you have your head on the ground. No? Yeah, so that's how so let's say, I want to say that everyone in Golok Brin Down is doing Sir Sasana for eternity. <laughs> because in Golok, even the speck of dust on the floor is made of a higher substance of what you are made. So everything is worthy of veneration. So everyone is, I mean, figuratively walking on their heads forever. Offering pranat. Vaikuntura priti vyadish akal chinmai. Saitanya chiritamrita say. From Vaikunta upwards, everything is transcendental substance. Even one speck of dust there is made of Swarup Shakti. So you are wanting to enter there, being made of Tatasta Shakti. Try to understand where you want to go and how you should <laughs> be there. <laughs> And then Jiva Goswami invokes this term of Aryan. Aryan, he says, means being well-bred. Bread? Yeah, being well-bred. And of course, if someone is well-bred, that is Brahma. Again, this is a very wise, sober, thinking person. And Jiva Goswami says that term Aryan means, includes even wisdom, someone who is wise. But Brahma here is saying, an Aryan. See my foolishness. See my lack of my lack of wisdom. See my lack of of thinking capacity. And Jiva Goswami then paraphrases Brahman. Brahman will ask Krishna, <clears throat> "What I made makes me the greatest fool." So Brahman is now asking for the title, the greatest fool on the whole multiverse. Krishna, please label me with that one. <laughs> I thought I was the greatest guy, smartest one. I realized I was on the other top down of the situation down and krishna says why would you say makes you the greatest fool again krishna is in mukdata the words of vishwana chakravarta mukdata is like naivety full naivety in brindal like with morsel of hand all these prayers what's going on here why you say you are the greatest fool because i want to see your powers brahma is saying and krishna asks but if what you did was meant to see my greatness, what's the fault? What's the problem? You did some arrangement because you want to see my greatness. <laughs> no? so of course, the more Krishna speaks like that, the more Brahma cries and increases his repentance. Again, it's not like, oh, okay, so then I have made any mistakes. Okay, no, no, he's going deeper and deeper. So Brahma replies to that question of Krishna, what's the problem if you wanted to, be, to see my greatness? What kind of vile fool I am to be worthy of behold? What kind of vile fool am I to be worthy of beholding your greatness? So you see the level of Brahma. I want to see your greatness. And what's the problem with that? That I want to see of greatness. Who I am to see your greatness. 
I have no qualification and I wanted to see your grade, but I have no adhikar for that. I just want to enter into that. And on top of that, to behold it by spreading my magic, what am I saying? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> by spreading Maya to see your powers, I am even more of a rascal, he's saying. <laughs> so I, I, not that I wanted again to see your greatness in a proper way, but by spreading my so-called Maya. No? So I'm on, on the top five, top one, let's say, high like a rascal dumbness in the whole universe, what am I saying? Hmm? So again, he gives the example to show the degree of his rascalness. Does that work, sis? Oh, okay. I thought I was in creating one. <laughs> and he said, I am like a spark in a fire. Hmm? So try to, try to, you have been in front of fire. So sparks, just like how much they last, no? For a moment, it's like, okay, nothing. No? Like Sula Siramash once will say, we are, uh, <laughs> he said, Krishna is of such nature, sort of Shakti is such nature, that we, we, if we don't establish a connection with that department, we are bordering non-existence, he said. <laughs> of course, it's not that we will stop existing at some point, but our infinitesimal constitution <laughs> is such that we are almost non-existent. <laughs> like trying to make this point, be humble. No. Because you are not the center. You are almost non-existent. By, by Krishna's grace, you exist. <laughs> but you have to have a connection with your source to really exist in the real sense of the term. If not, as we said the other day, we are not really alive. We are atmaha, killers of the soul. How much we can claim, I am alive, I exist. Or Jiva Goswami concludes saying, out of great wretchedness, Brahma says, I wanted to see my own powers by spreading my Maya. Another way of interpreting the Sanskrit, not I want to see you and I spread my Maya for that, but I want to see my own powers and that's why I spread my Maya. So you don't know what's worse of the two interpretations. No? Brahma is like, I don't know what's worse, but I'm burned here. No? So Brahma is admitting somehow his pride here. I want to see my powers. But admitting your pride is the sign of humility also. No. So you have to begin somewhere. No. <laughs> so maybe our immediate humility experience will be, I'm proud. On some, on some level, I'm acknowledging that as much as I can see how proud I am on that level. And that will invoke some clarity. And probably the next level of humility is that you will see that you are actually more proud than what you thought. <laughs> And that means you are becoming more humble. I mean, do you follow my point? I mean, to, to be humble is not necessarily has to do with something separate from pr pride. <laughs> At least the first lessons is to acknowledge how much proud you are and to have the, the humility to, to, to not be so sure about that. It's not that, yeah, Guru, I'm proud like this. I have a very clear idea of how much proud I am. He'll say, you are really proud. Yeah. <laughs> you think you know how proud you are? That's not so easy. <laughs> so, so Brahma is again having this type of epiphany here. In his Krama Sandarbha, then Srila Jiva Goswami is continuing on analyzing all these different names that he's used, Brahma is using in connection to Brahma's feeling of wickedness and so on. He says, Anaryan means Wickedness and foolishness. Hmm? So Brahma says, I'm an Arya. Hmm? Implies his wickedness and foolishness. Then when Brahma calls Krishna Adya and, and Tuayi, remember, you who are the primeval Lord and who are you. Brahma mentions wickedness with Anantyam Paramatmani. You are unlimited and you are Supreme Guru. Brahma is pointing to his foolishness. And with Mai Maine and Mayam Bitatya, by spreading my illusory potency of you who are the magic of ma magicians of magicians, he expressed extreme foolishness. No? So it's in degree. First wickedness, foolishness, and extreme foolishness. So Brahma is increasing his humility in this way. Let's conclude with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's words in Sarartha Darshani. He begins saying, Rather than performing devotional activities, Brahma thinks he has simply committed a great offense to Krishna. So of course, Brahma again is a devotee. He's, he's not a non-devotee. He has done bhakti on some level. But in this moment, he cannot think 
he won't think of himself as such. Even if Krishna tells him, you are a devotee, Brahma, you're my devotee. You have done this nice universe, architect, you nice service. I needed someone doing that. You did that. Thank you so much. But for Brahma, it's like, it's, this is not the moment for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Brahma is questioning. I'm, I'm I the I mean, Krishna tell me I'm a devotee, but how much of a, my, of a devotee I am? How much of a devotee I should be? How much of a devotee I can become? How much of a devotee I am in comparison to all that I could be? So we should question ourselves in that way also, not neurotically again, just in case I repeat the idea. But <laughs> we shouldn't be too sure. I mean, we are devotees by Bhakti's grace. No, we could. There's a place for recognizing I'm a bhakta. There's bhakti come has come to my life. I cannot deny that. You follow? If I say no bhakti, there's no bhakti. Of course, there are very high devotees who, in a very spirit of extreme lamentation, may say things like that. No, I have no bhakti. I'm full of lust. I'm full of, like you hear. I don't know bhakti no thakur in his charanagati and so on. And you say like, wow. But if maybe if you try to repeat that, I mean, you can sing the song, no problem. <laughs> but it, on some level, if you try to imitate him, that may be dysfunctional for you because you are not, we may not be in that level with that type of humility that takes what not to tackle to express, to express himself in a way that seems extreme, but it's natural for him. But for us, it may be dysfunctional. Yeah. You follow my point? Yeah. And, and maybe for some stage, there's a place to say, I'm a devotee. Maybe in, in, an, in a beginning stage, you may think, as my Guru Master likes to say, I'm a devotee. Nobody is a devotee except for myself. <laughs> no? Highest stage, everyone is a devotee except for myself. And in between a stage, I'm a devotee and others are devotees as well. <laughs> and I learned to recognize that and detect that and, and so on. No? So there are, 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 in different stages, there will be different subjective experiences. So Brahma hears, and, and of course, in a special moment of deep offense, it's, it's okay that you forget that you are a devotee for that moment because you have done such a non-devotional thing that that's your focus. Mm -hmm. So Brahma is mentioning that with the word again, anaryam. So Vishwanath Chakwari Thakur says, with anaryam, Brahma implies, you may give suitable punishment or forgiveness, otherwise persons like me will commit further improper impropriety. So Brahma is basically asking for chastisement here. No? Like if, because if I am the creator, I am somehow a reference point for many people. I've done such a nonsense. So if you don't do anything to me now, people will follow suit according to what happened to great personalities. So please do something about it. As we mentioned, that's how Bhagavad Gita, that's the very first thing Krishna said when he opens his mouth to Arjuna, an area, basically. You are full. <laughs> so that's part of the Guru's discourse to us as disciples. Sometimes the first thing we say, full, <laughs> affectionately. Again, no, we are not here promoting like this functional abuse and in the name of being a guru, I'm just like no, dovetailing my anger and just making catharsis with my students or something. But, but this is what Krishna is saying to Arjuna in the beginning of the Gita, how this lamentation came to you. It's not befitting. You are an Arya. You are Arjun. You come from such a distinguished background and you're lamenting like a baby here in a very superficial way. You, you are Arya. You know for knowing higher values in life, but you are acting as an Arya. And then in, in the same lineage in Bhagavad Gita 2.11, he says, you speak with wise words, but you are lamenting for those things which are not worthy of lamentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing. No? Because we can speak, you can give lecture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's relatively easy to sit where I'm sitting and just open your mouth for an hour and mm -hmm. say some fancy stuff. But then, as I say yesterday, you, know, you were say all the things, and Krishna say, "Okay, you say all those fancy stuff. Let's see how you walk to talk after the class." No? <laughs> and then you have to see how how of an aria you are, or how an aria you are, of an an aria you. Are. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, 
you are lamenting for things that are not worthy of lamentation. In other words, another definition for Arya means someone who laments for things who are worthy of lamentation. <laughs> There's place for lamentation, as we saw. Mahaprabhu is lamenting for the right reason. And for every single stage of our practice, there should be a corresponding form of lamentation. <laughs> we should find which is the one we fit with. Uh, again, not imitating the lamentation, I don't know, of Mahaprabhu in the Gambir, just throwing your head onto the walls and crying. I mean, you cannot do that. I mean, you try, but that won't be sustainable. But there is a form of corresponding lamentation, corresponding humility in each particular stage. So Brahma is trying to, to be honest about where he is and what's the corresponding lamentation here. So Brahma continued, almost there. What was my bad conduct? If Krishna just asked, no, you say you are an anarya, you, you misbehave. Hmm? So what's, what's your bad conduct? What was my bad conduct, says Brahma? You are my father and the source of everything, yet I offended you when you were enjoying lunch with your friends in the forest. Again, Brahma is like, bring the whip here. <laughs> what was my foolishness? You have unmeasurable powers and you are the soul of all souls. Revealing my foolishness, I misused my position to commit an offense against you. I'm a fool. I have shown the ultimate foolishness <laughs> in attempting to mystify you, who bewilder even the masters of illusion. I desire to see your powers by invoking my powers of illusion. That's a word like that. But beside you, <coughs> I'm sorry. I am as insignificant as a spark emanating from a huge fire. So Brahma is crying over and over again, mentioning all this. So some words connected to this particular verse where Brahma is trying to show, show in his humility. And in the next verse that we will be seeing Friday, right? Yeah, Friday, Brahma will continue. I mean, this is only the beginning of his lamentation. <laughs> That's for you to know. No? This is just like how they say when they put the car on and the gear warming up. Warming up no? That's the warming up of, of Brahma's remorse here. No? So we'll, in the next verse, that will overflow. This kiss lamentation in this verse will overflow and reach to the next verse. And he will establish very important points of Tattva and Siddhanta while lamenting. No? That's the important thing. It's not that you lament uh, non-shastrically. <laughs> But you lament in the context of revelation, and while doing so, he's establishing revelation for us. Interesting. So in the next class, we will continue with this art of devotional lamentation, or what sometimes I like to call crying yoga. So Brown will show that. There's the yoga. You have all to know it is beer yoga, gun yoga, any sound nonsense yoga. Why not crying yoga? Laughing yoga. We have crying yoga also. <laughs> so Brahma will, will school us in crying yoga. So prepare, bring your, how do you say? Tishtis. <laughs> and see you next Friday. Three Brahma Stuti keys. So any questions? If there are any questions, we have some minutes. Yes, Atmananda Prabhu. I, I couldn't hear, sorry. Which shakti of Krishna presides over Aparad? Over? Aparad. Aparad. Aparad, where is its source? Which shakti? If Krishna is the controller of the Maya shakti, then the serb shakti, then the, the Anu Jiva has no, you know, is presided over by either one of those shaktis. Mm -hmm. So where is it coming from? Maya shakti. Okay, so Krishna is Daivi Asia Guna Mayi. Mm -hmm. So what is this aparat? It's Krishna is defending himself with his own shakti. I don't understand the point. So which shakti? So Maya shakti. Krishna is Abhidya, Anadi so Abhidya. Krishna is defending himself. In which sense? Because it is the Maya shakti. But Maya shakti doesn't mean that Krishna is Maya shakti. But then how is it the responsibility of this jiva? I mean, the jiva is, has will. The jiva is choosing a particular yeah. idea. Yeah. So if you choose so to go against bhakti... The of the soul, how could a sachin 
offend the Sachidananda. How could the Sachidananda Anu offend the Sachidananda Guru? They're the same quality. So we are not I, saying. I don't know if like offense of the soul makes sense to me. We didn't say offense of the soul. We say sin of the soul. Okay. It's a way of saying, of course, when I say sins of the flesh and sins of the soul, it's a way of putting the notion to make a difference between Papa and Apara. Okay. I mean, there's a difference between Papa and Apara. Right? So they're both, I mean, they're both just the, the Maya Shakti. Yeah, Shakti but, in, Maya Shakti. but in Papa, you are not going against Bhakti. But the... the the soul is not controlling the Maya Shakti. The mm -hmm. soul is controlled, is under the influence of the Maya Shakti. Mm -hmm. It's controlled by Krishna. So I'm not understanding like how that makes sense. Free will. Free will. Yeah, basically that's the point. It boils down to we are individuals with will. I mean, if if not, there is no free will. We are just like being moved by. Of course, we are affected by different shakti, but we are one shakti ourselves. So if we are deprived of will, we are no longer tatasta jiva. We are just inert matter. So we have responsibility as jivas. So we choose. I mean, free will means you have some choice. How free is our will? That's another thing. <laughs> but there is some will. And with that will, we have choices. Krishna says in the Gita, every action has different influences. Now, it's, Bhagavan is there. The jiva is there. Different influences are there. It's not just only I decide, but it's not only someone else's desire. I'm just being carried away by by the different waves of shaktis. Because if not, I don't have any choice in the matter whatsoever. So it makes no sense. I mean, I'm not an individual. So it all boils down that we are individuals. And in bhakti, if you are bhakta, you receive certain sambandha gyan, certain knowledge as to what to do, what not to do. So if despite knowing what to do, you choose to voluntarily go against bhakti that's called that's what we call aparat basically why would krishna's shakti go against himself like why why like that why would he why would he make the maya shakti such that it i mean maya is... shakti is not going against krishna okay maya shakti is serving krishna okay. ashamed of her service as it's described in the bhagavatam yeah. maya shakti is not but someone has to do it <laughs> So she's serving that. She's not trying to make us fall. I so mean, the upper rod is the same. Sorry? The upper rod is the same. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's it's like relationship, you know. In in a relationship, there can be upper rod. Right? There could be an offense mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if it's a relationship with bhakti in between. I, well, if so, where is it coming from? If, if the Maya Shakti is uh, making some offense against the Swarup Shakti. Oh, Maya Shakti is not the, making an offense. Okay, so then what's the Sachin and the Jiva doing? The Jiva is under How the influence of Maya Shakti is making an offense. It's not that Maya Shakti is offending so Krishna Swarup Shakti. Shakti. No, Krishna didn't that. create any Shakti. All Shaktis exist for eternity. Okay. But Krishna is the master of the Maya Shakti. Yeah. So it's a, it's kind of but the master means what? That he's not under his influence. But Maya Shakti has some purpose to, to play in connection with the jivas that inhabit this world. So, yeah, I just don't get it. Like, so, you know, Krishna is not the creator of the Maya Shakti. And the Maya Shakti is acting independently from Krishna. No. Who's, who's, he is the master of the Maya Shakti. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's also the master of Tatashka Shakti. Yeah. So Krishna is the master. But know, master like, doesn't mean that we don't have any choice in the matter. Yeah. He's our source, but he wants to love us and he wants us to love him and love is voluntary. So we are, he's not forcing us to, to love him. So since we have a choice to choose to love him, we also have a choice to choose not to love him. And for that, Maya Shakti has to be there. To facilitate the second choice, <laughs> because if there is no only only one choice, I tell you, I love you, I, I give you free will. So which are my options? No, only love me. There's a second option, no. Uh, so that's not very loving. No? So if I love you, I have to give you the option to choose to love me voluntarily, and to choose not. And for that, Maya Shakti is facilitating those who choose 
not to love Krishna. And Sarup Shakti is to facilitate the other choice. But we, we choose to test the Shakti, one direction or the other. It all, it all boils down to personal responsibility. We are conscious beings and we have to choose to, to love Krishna. That's, that's what, what, what makes it worthy. I mean, it gives meaning to the whole thing. Okay, let's continue ruminating yeah, on that. I just say one thing. I think yeah. um, Gurmar talks a lot about Aparad being like really intentional. Tatmananda. I feel like sometimes we can think like we just like Aparad just like happens to us. Like it sounds a little bit like what Shakti is it coming from? Like to me, it sounded, I don't know if I'm understanding you correctly, but I think like you're saying we have a choice and it's really about intention mm -hmm. and that it's actually harder to commit upraad than we think. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we can get really neurotic. Oh yeah. Like, I offended this person and mm. I said the wrong thing, but it has to come from like a very intentional, I want to do, you know, I want to, whether, whether it's the, you know, offending the with your words, with your mind, with your actions, that you're mm -hmm. making a purposeful action of, you know, hurting someone, like you're, like he's saying in a relationship, mm -hmm. or like Brahma, yeah, or like Brahma's, mm -hmm. you know, saying, you know, he's realizing that I, it wasn't just an accident that he decided to steal all the cows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cows and cowboys boys, and, and you know, planned out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but even if you make an offense through a relationship, the healing comes through the relationship. Right. So just like in this, like the, the remedy relationship. to it is in the relationship. Yeah. Right. So if if the sarup shakti is going to withdraw, if you make some up around, and you know, then you, you I mean, what is it like? Krishna is like, oh, you offended me. You offended my name. So oh, see you later. I don't. I don't want to do it to you. You can go play in my shopping. Well, the name is always available. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the devotees are always available. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think Krishna can. But it all boils down again to us becoming responsible of whatever we have done and take proper stance like mm -hmm. Brahma did and becoming repentant and do the needful for the apparat to be overcome. Of course, I mean, that's our hope. No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. We are just one apparat after the other, and there's no, no very bright future. I think it's future. very easy to confuse all these things yeah. with like uh, <clears throat> uh, guilt trips, you know? With what, sorry? Guilt trips. Yeah, yeah, that's guilt why I, I mentioned like, over and over like, again non neurosis. Games that, like, yeah, I agree. Play on people, like, I agree. Forever. I use the word non neuroticism so, like 108 like, times in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I kind of think like, that in my experience like this is a guilt trip and like i mean I, it's like a manipulative game that like people play with each other like all the time they misuse like this stuff that's why this i try to make it clear is that's not what we are talking about here i try to make i mean i understand that some of us may need even more repetition of that idea than others because of previous experiences but but I try to make that clear. This is not about guilt. It's not about like neurosis. It's not about justifying abuse in the name of uh, you are an offender. <laughs> and so, and I understand for some of us it may take some time because I mean, trauma can come from in the name of bhakti. <laughs> and we know about that. I mean, let's be realistic. So I, I, I understand that point. And, and if, if some of us need to emphasize that even more, that's totally fine because this is not a guilt trip at all. This is totally the opposite. But again, not to the point of saying, not, do not speak at all about apparat because apparat is there. I mean, it's not that I am creating this word now. It's there in the Shasta <laughs> and there's some stance to take. So I think that's the ideal middle point, not go to the extreme of, as we say, neuroticism, not to the extreme of complacency. No, no more apparat, I don't care for that. Just be free. No, but not neurotic. Not complacent, but middle point. Just responsible and in a healthy way, trying to, as Karanga Priya said, no, understand Aparad in a substantial way. It's not a, oh, I stepped on the shadow of Maharaj, I will be born as a lizard in my next hundred <laughs> lifetimes. So, come on. <laughs> because you can use this notion of Aparad and guilt just to 
manipulate, and I totally agree with that. But I mean, that's not the idea. No? That's not the idea. And and if we are concerned in a positive way to serve Krishna, Guru, and Vaishnava with affection and sincerity, that's the most powerful thing. No? In one sense, we are not speaking that much about be be careful with this, do not do this, do not do that, do not do that, but try to do this, try to feel like this, try to serve with this sincerity, with this effect, and that automatically is protecting you from all the other details. And maybe you fell in something you didn't know, I don't know, some technical <laughs> detail of how to do it. You entered the bathroom with your japa mala in your first day, and you didn't know you should, we're not expected to do that. That's not a parade, because you didn't know. Now, if you know and you keep doing that, that's another thing. <laughs> but it's not in the beginning. Oh, so... The, you have to be, yeah, flexible, not too complacent, but flexible enough to to navigate these ideas in a way that they are nourishing and not dysfunctional for, for our process. No? Just to continue with this point, I just yeah. wanted to ask um, for just for some clarity. So um, it seems like Aparad gets in the way of uh, developing a relationship because if I'm thinking that I can offend you and it's this that creates some distance. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like if this yeah. neurosis, mm -hmm. you know, of mm -hmm. creating, you know, offending mm -hmm. someone, it, that's also creating a space between us. Mm -hmm. So now I can't get close to you because I have this fear that, you know, if so I do something wrong, I can, you know, this is bad for my soul. You know? mm -hmm. Like this eternal damnation. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We never get to that point of <laughs> eternal damnation. <laughs> but, I mean, and so many things can be said. For some people, some level of fear of certain things is required in certain stages. No? Some people really need to, and Krishna says also, that's some one motivation in people approach me and do their thing because they are afraid of the consequences of failing in that. I mean, that's the whole idea of Bhaidi Bhakti. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that in Raghavarma Chandrika. Bhaidi Bhakti basically is impelled by the fear, but the idea of, I have to follow these rules because if I do not do this, this will happen. So fear-based. Of course, he's saying that's not our school of thought. <laughs> but in some level, in some moment, for some people, they they cannot conceive something different from that. So, okay, there is a place for dovetailing fear. But if you are in proper association in time, you will realize, yeah, I don't need this fear. No, I mean, I, I, I cannot, I'm not relating to you because I am fearful of what will happen if I do not relate with you. It's like, oh, that doesn't sound too loving. <laughs> so, so, yeah, of course, the same, that's what I say. The main concern is not so much how I do not offend you, but how can I love you more? How can I please you more? If you are totally absorbing that, there's no place for apparatus whatsoever. But just in case scripture is saying, it's not nice if you kidnap Krishna's friends and ruin his picnic. No, I mean, that won't be nice. No, <laughs> Just in case. No? You may need to hear that. In so again, Shaftar is always speaking directly and indirectly. No, Sometimes the emphasis is, all the benefits of loving Krishna and serving, but sometimes what will happen if you go against that? Ideally, we are not supposed to be doing that, but I mean, we have seen that apparat happened. It's not that why Shatra is speaking about this weird thing of apparat. I never seen nothing at all in the history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. No, no, there had been apparat. And of course, abusing, like Admananda said, creating guilt trip through the idea of apparat, that's in itself is apparat. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> so, so, so that's also a delicate situation because you can use something and don't do apparat and you do it in such a way that actually you are doing apparat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, at the end of the day it has to do a lot with one's sincerity and integrity and authenticity. Anyhow, some hands were there also. Orangi, you are here. Well, mine was related a little bit with the, the Prabhu talking about willpower. And, and I'm going a little bit forward because would it be a little bit of influence into our willpower from Krishna in this, well, in this case? 
for him to to make the arrangement where he could satisfy the mothers of Vrindavan and of having Krishna in every house. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit forward on the story today. But, this is um, before this section, yeah. Yeah, but um, wouldn't it be like Krishna creating an influence on Brahma so mm. this would happen? So he will expand and... Yeah. Yeah, that's also possible. Indeed, what we mentioned is that that's we get the picture gets bigger here now, interestingly. Thanks for the question. That, that I we spoke in the second class that we were... Because actually there are some people who say that the Brahma, the Mohan Lila and the Brahma Stuti are interpolations in the Bhagavatam. There are some Balab Sampradaya followers of Madhvacharya, they consider these chapters, 12, 13, 14 of the 10th canto, are not original in the Bhagavatam. And for different reasons, you have to hear the second class. I won't repeat that now. But one thing they say is that in the beginning of creation, when Brahma saw Krishna, uh, <clears throat> Brahma asked Krishna, please protect me and from all illusion, material illusion when I engage in the work of creation. No, because he was about to be the architect of the universe. So please protect me so I do not become entangled by your Maya Shakti while doing that. So Krishna said, that has to. No, I'll protect you. So the ones who say these chapters are interpolation, say, then these chapters are interpolation because if Brahma's, Krishna said to Brahma, I will protect you from all illusion, then now... Be Moha. No, he's fully illusion. So that cannot be because Krishna said he will protect him. So that shows that these chapters are spurious, spurious you say? Mm -hmm. But actually, the, the idea is actually Brahma's illusion was Krishna said, I will protect you from all influence of Mahamaya. <laughs> that was in the contract. No? In, in small letters, say, but no, I didn't say anything regarding Yoga Maya. <laughs> And regard, again, Brahma is now realizing here what's what's Mahamaya, and now there's another Maya here. With him. So yeah, actually, technically speaking, Yoga Maya or Krishna's own Shakti was operating the whole thing, you know, as for many purposes at the same time. Actually, you no, know, for because Brahma wanted Sakyarasa, so Krishna is facilitating that desire of his devotee and showing this trailer to for him to see. Okay. For the mothers and um, cows in Vrindavan who want to have Krishna their, as their child. So Krishna expanded for a year in these forms. We didn't speak today about that, but that was that's the, the pre-section. But he, again, in the context of all that, nonetheless, Brahma is showing actually his adhikar and sincerity by expressing, I'm a fool, I'm a nonsense, I'm an offender. Well, actually, Krishna is creating all that, orchestrating all that from Yoga Maya. So yeah, it, he's, he's behind that in this particular case. Of course, this is a particular case, no? <laughs> it's not that I, I go and attack every devotee and I will say, oh, that's Yoga Maya, Krishna's making me do that, because Brahma is not saying that. You follow me, but Brahma is not saying, well, it's Yoga Maya, Krishna wanted this, so I have no fault here. No? So he's in the context of that lamenting in a way that is upgrading his bhakti. So at the end of the day, Brahma is totally blessed by this arrangement to, to actually get what he asked for in the beginning of creation, which is full access into this Sakya portal. And everyone else also, the Vatsalya camp, the Sakya camp, and, and so on. So yeah, Krishna was quite in, in there. <laughs> what else? Something else? I'm just thinking that even within that example... Um, and the influence of Yoga Maya, oh. probably at the end of the day, Brahma still had a will. He had a choice of how to react and mm. how to. There's the influence, but there at the end of the day, he might still have like a choice of how to act with his pride and his mm -hmm. imperfections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get the point. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Because again, we we would say we have influence of Yoga Maya in our lives. I mean, Bhakti is another way of speaking about Swarup Shakti, Yoga Maya, and it's not that we our will is frozen or we we. I mean, it's just coming and then passive and and just carried away by Bhakti. No, I mean you you choose. I mean, Aparad means that basically Bhakti is coming, and you choose to 
do something else instead. <laughs> no. So yeah, Krishna's making. So the point is, it's not black and white. No, it's not just all yoga maya, all vaya shakti, or all my will and I control. Or it's, it's a mixture of all these different influences and in different degrees. That's what Krishna says again in the Gita. We're describing the ingredients of actions. He described like seven or eight different ingredients. It's not just it's you doing whatever you like, or it's Krishna controlling everything and you have no choice in the matter. He's speaking about action under the influence of Maya Shakti in this world. He's not speaking about Yoga Maya and, 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 and Swarup Shakti, so what to speak there. So yeah, there is place also for to say, okay, Brahma chose in the context of that arrangement that Krishna mostly orchestrated that particular stance. Okay, Krishna Chaitanya. Uh, Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, one thing you mentioned was very interesting in the sense that it's very hard to commit an aparad. It's not easy in the sense that it, it is it safe to say that aparad is purely based on intention. Mm -hmm. In the sense that the example that you gave of Java beads in the bathroom. Mm. Is that if I take Java beads in the bathroom, I might have a karmic reaction to it, but it's not an opera because I did it without knowing. Mm. But if I do it with knowing, with mm. the intention, mm -hmm. then it becomes an opera. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. And, and even, and even, yeah, and there are degrees of all the things. For example, we hear so many times the problems of the karma, karmic reaction of eating meat. But there's people who doesn't have a clue that that's not so good. So there is some reaction, but it's not as heavy, if you will, as if you know, and you still do that. And that's not apara because it has nothing to do with bhakti, but still there are degrees of sinful reactions, if you will. And of course, there are degrees of apara. Now, when we say papa and apara, it's not that all apara and all papa are on the same degree at, at the same time. No? But yeah, it has a lot to do with having knowledge of something. So that's a commit the responsibility of receiving knowledge. It has a price. Right. It's not, oh, how nice that I know all this. Oh, yeah, it's nice, but now you have, every time you do the opposite, there is something they're telling you, but you're not supposed to do that now. No, like you're, I mean, you're supposed to change up in attentively and not checking Instagram at the same time. <laughs> and you know, but if you choose to do that, again. Well. Right. It reminded me because of his statement that it's harder to become closer with the fear of fraud, but it's hard to come into that fraud because your intention is never to, like, for example, if I serve you food without salt, you're not going to like, if I serve my guru with, uh, food without salt, he's not going to like it, but that still is not a fraud because my intention is never to serve him something that's not palatable. Mm -hmm. So it's not committing an opera, it's just a mistake, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Yeah. Right. So it's very Apparatus hard. Apparatus that when you realize that, you keep doing that or something. Right. You know? It's <laughs> like you intentionally wanted to give him... Yeah, I mean, food. you have the example of, of Bidura's wife. He gave to Krishna banana peels. Right. And of course, on some level, but technically speaking, that's not what to be to offer to Krishna, banana peels. But Krishna says in the Gita, what? I mean, if you offer me leaf, water, flower with bhakti, and he uses the word bhakti twice in the verse, he says, I accept that. In the, in the case of Vidura's wife, there was so much bhakti that he did not only accept, because you can accept, I accept, he ate them. Because you say, okay, I accept the banana peel. I won't eat the banana peel, but I accept it. There was love. <laughs> say, no, no, there was so much love that he was just like, he never realized it was a banana peel because his realization is it's love. No? It's love. Bring another love, another piece of love. Love peels. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's all about, it's, it's very important this idea of intention and not so much like what you do, but how, no? The, the, the how, the, the inner. And it has a lot to do with, yeah, having certain knowledge. And, and that's why there are different type apparatus according to also degrees of education if you will on certain stage you don't know that much so there's not you could say that there's not that much risk of certain apparatus but the more you become more and more and more and more and more educated the more response it's like on some level like in human society you have one year two years and you take a knife and kill someone i mean i don't know if you can do it but accidentally you won't go to jail you have two years you don't know still 
but the more adult you become, the more your decisions will create a much more delicate reaction because you are expected to know all these things. So as a devote, you are expected to to get in detail of all the things. So yeah, commitment increases basically, you know, which is not a bad thing. Hopefully you don't we don't feel something I don't want. <laughs> so yeah. Christian Chaitanya. You had a question? Well, or a comment? Yeah. Well, you know, I was just thinking about it when you were talking about the whole thing, how many instances of misunderstandings there are in our Shastra over and over and over again. So you got like Rama misunderstanding of Krishna is you have Indra, that same thing happening. Mm -hmm. So misunderstanding Krishna or misunderstanding devotees, like Pundarik Pidyaniti was misunderstood, but also he misunderstood and said something about those Pajaris. So I'm just saying it's like, it seems like it's the theme that is part of the progressive mm -hmm. getting better. It, it's like a thing that happens all the time to everybody, mm -hmm. yoga maya, maha maya, or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. part of the path. And generally speaking, in most of the instances, somebody figured out, man, oops, what did I do? <laughs> and then, man, I was pretty prideful there and I misunderstood something. And then they figure it out. You know, it's like an almost, all of them, even if it sometimes it's operat, sometimes it's not quite operat. Mm -hmm. But all, the, all of the almost all the times, it's very rare where it's like, oh, they made a mistake. <laughs> you know, that's like a Christian type of go to hell forever idea, which doesn't mm -hmm. seem to come up in mm -hmm. from our side at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm just saying all that to say that operat, although I don't want to say it out loud, is. On, on the one hand, it's not as bad as we think, <laughs> and there's like an end time to the reaction, and also it's a learning. Yeah. That, I mean, this was kind of awesome in a way mm -hmm. for Brahma's progression mm -hmm. towards his uh, ultimate, you know, goal of Krishna Bhakti and mm -hmm. praying. Mm -hmm. This whole thing that happened, it, it really helped him understand. Yeah. Like, wow, I was pretty high and then Krishna's here. So it wasn't a bad thing is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Parada is not the end of the story, basically, no. <laughs> it usually is the beginning. Yeah. And then, and it goes <laughs> and, and from Aparad you go up. Mm -hmm. Depending and almost all of the stories. Yeah, now, there's a couple yeah, the main out part there. is not the Aparad in itself, but how you react yeah, to that. Yeah. No? So what counts after and and, and, and that counts mm -hmm. the real teaching and learning and hope and on all the things. It's not so much Abroad and get stuck there, and then the reaction counts, and be ready for anything like that. <laughs> but basically, the teaching given throughout all the, the shastra is like, okay, this happened as you mentioned. Whether you it's an apparat or some ba other background there, but how it unfolds from that on, no? and it's always trying to learn from that, yeah. no? because you can go even neurotic, like, okay, I will, I can, I mean. You want you don't want to commit any apparat, but probably you you may commit. Who knows? You can open to that, but my life continues also. No? It's not like oh, if I commit, what will happen? I mean, you are trying to to continue with the best possible intention, also having the trust. If I try to be sincere, it's not only about being sincere because this idea of also being sincere can can be watered down. No, like I I'm sincere. No? Of course. You can always be more sincere. No, that's the point. No, how much sincere we are and how much sincere we can. Again, not neurosis, <laughs> no, no guilt trip, but also healthy, uh, challenging self invitation, if you will. Okay, I'm sincere. I can grow in my sincerity, and I can. <clears throat> Sometimes that that's the main thing. I will say, like the main reason I was reading. I don't. There was a Christian author recently, and he was saying something like that. That the main ideas of of, of, of sin, because you have what they call sins of commission and sins of omission. No, some, I mean, I'm going to sin for a minute, but he's speaking about these mm -hmm. things that you can do, bad stuff doing, or knowing that you should be doing good stuff and you're not doing. No? So it's that's the main delicate thing. No? And that's somehow more connected with our idea of apparat. You know something that should be done a certain way, but you don't do it. No? <laughs> You follow my point? So it has some more with, with 
cheating, self-cheating, do all, like hypocrisy, this type of ideas which actually go against what bhakti is. Basically, that, that's the point. But again, still there is hope. <laughs> and there may be some delay for those people, but, but of course we are never saying hell forever or, or things like that. No? But your progress towards the goal just may be delayed, basically, no? depending on how you choose to respond to, to that. Mm. Okay, so Atul Saki came. That means something. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> we are ready to. Uh, well, I guess I'll just say one small thing, if that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, along the lines of what um, Krishna Chaitanya was saying, that in, is it fair to say that instead of this lightning bolt coming down to punish us, that in fact the burning that or for mafias or, or any of these personalities um, that I've done something wrong that that this in and of itself is the mercy of Bhakti Devi and the Lord to help us mm -hmm. change our heart and if we recognize it and respond in an appropriate way then we do grow like he was saying but just this, at that moment itself is actually it's not that Krishna's running away that, that or that Bhakti Devi is running away but that she's actually coming and that's the mercy that we feel this way and mm -hmm. recognize that we did something wrong yeah, we could say like, yeah, Bhakti doesn't like a parad because, of course, she doesn't. <laughs> but we could say she hides for a moment yeah. so we can become properly introspective and, as you say, enter into the proper spirit so she will reappear in an upgraded version, if you want. <laughs> because it's not that Bhakti Devi has the intention of leaving us forever because you are such a mess and whatever. <laughs> but sometimes that's required, no certain moment of, so I can go deeper and think in another situation and if I'm sincere I will have whatever Brahma is here he's ac acknowledging his pride and that's a form of humility as we were saying mm -hmm. so it's, it doesn't end in I'm proud I mean if you say I'm proud and you really mean it you are no longer that proud mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it already starts to mm -hmm. to solve itself if you will mm -hmm. no? so that's how it we should see it dynamically of course no? always with some positive outcome in mind for sure so yeah I will, I will conclude saying that it most has to do with trying not to be a hypocrite and duplicitous and trying to, to use bhakti to yeah to hide those things that we need to acknowledge but if you have that this willingness to acknowledge no matter how messy you are in which stage you may be I mean there's total like Sula Seras will say no? he says your future is brilliant mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's that what it what it remains. <laughs> In between, there may be some messiness, ups and downs, as we Richard say, falling upward. <laughs> but future is brilliant. No? Bhakti coming to your life, that's already something that I mean, some cases may take more time than others, but bhakti is there. So we should at the end of the day end on that note of of hope and and, and, and the gift that has come to our life again. As Mahaprabhu said in the suggestion, and all these three first lines of, wow, this is so much. And there is some lamentation in the context of, I would like to honor this more, not neurosis, but healthy lamentation. And of course, the result of that lamentation is upgraded version, third verse of Sikshastagam. And then come fourth verse. Each verse of Sikshastagam is an upgraded version of the previous one. And each verse is so in a, a, a deeper degree of lamentation. <laughs> if you will, of humility and all this stuff, but they are taking us higher and higher. So again, that's the, the, the role of that, basically. Not to be thrown there forever, depressed and discouraged and crying and Krishna forgetting us or whatever. <laughs> Nothing like that. No. Okay. I think we are ready on time. Prashad may be ready, so we can continue sharing more informally. Thank you so much for your time and presence, your attention, questions. Shila Gurudev ki jai, Shivan Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan ki jai, Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Brahma Stuti ki jai, Krishna Balaram ji ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrind ki jai, Gaur Praman ki jai, Vancha Kalpata Rupya Shatika Sandhupya Eva Chapati Tanam Pavani Pyo Vaishnavivya Namo Namaha Nanta Koti Vaishnavrind ki jai, Gaur Haribo.